Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's your man, Adam A. Spencer. And in this video, we are here on Forbes.com. And of course, I wanted to share these simple five credit mistakes that you want to make sure you avoid. Okay, these are five credit mistakes you do not want to do. I personally, yeah, I ain't, ain't going to make it out like I'm perfect, okay? Because I've made some mistakes, including one or two of these bad boys, which is why I wanted to share them with you. Number one on this list is applying for too many accounts. I know how exciting it can be. All these credit cards left and right. You see me over here talking about a credit card. You see that guy talking about a credit card. You hear someone else like, hey, man, I got a new credit card. Yes, it can definitely be you know a little enticing and, and encouraging at times where you're like man I, I, I need to get me a new card people said i need another another new credit card well you know in spite of these opportunities be careful how often you apply for credit offers having too many inquiries on your report especially in a short amount of time can negatively impact your credit score the issue here is not comparing loan offers or credit cards. For instance, if you're looking to buy a car or a house, it is logical to apply with several lenders to find the best rates. But the issue we are talking about is applying for a wide variety of accounts over a long stretch of time. Eventually, creditors will assume you are desperate for credit and you may have a red flag on your credit report. So be selective when you fill out credit card and loan applications. Do your research before you allow the lender to pull your credit so you can limit the number of inquiries. When I was first starting off back in the day, mm, yeah, I was one of those. Yeah, I was like, oh, oh, oh. And, you know, they, they kind of target you. You get all these flyers in the mail and it's you're like, hey, reward points. OK, this, that, the other. Let me jump on board. But it ain't all that, you know, it ain't as, as, as glorious as it seems, as we just heard. Number two is canceling old credit card accounts. Now, if you haven't used one of your credit cards in a long time, you might be tempted to cancel it. In actuality, it may work in your favor to keep that account open, even if it isn't in use. One factor is determining your credit score is the length of credit history. OK, meaning how long you've had a credit line open, um, a credit, you know, a loan, how long and longer, the better. So as long as these unused cards have no balance, they are acting as long term references for other creditors in the future. Having the accounts open will also lower your debt to available credit ratio. One of the most important factors in determining your credit score. So if you have annual fees on your card or you are constantly tempted to make incremental purchases with that card, cancel it to protect your finances. You may see a little drop in your credit score for a period of time, but you can recover from that. It is only wise to keep these accounts open if they are not costing you any money during the year. So this is a very interesting point that I, I thought, again, I wanted to share this with you because I, you don't hear people bring up this kind of curveball. You only hear people say, hey, canceling old credit card, you know, credit card accounts is horrible. Never do it. It's bad. It's the worst thing ever. Um, and this was a mistake that I did. It wasn't necessarily an old card, though, but I did have... Um, I ended up at one point getting uh, uh, the Capital uh, Spark card um, for my DBA, actually. Bam. Adam Helper, my my sole proprietorship business. And, um, you know, at that time, though, I was kind of, again, this is like a few years ago, not too long ago. I was getting really into my kick of, hey, you know, I want to improve my overall finances. And, um, you know, I, I was big into Dave Ramsey. He says, cut all of your credit cards. I had just kind of gotten that card. I was like, like I said, I was starting to dive into my kind of financial literacy and wellness like game, you know, like my whole mindset was starting to shift at this time. So I'm listening to too many people. And one pe person's like, you need business credit cards, you need cards. And Dave Ramsey's like, you don't want no credit cards. Credit is bad. Credit's the devil. So I'm over here like cutting up. I literally, he said, cut up your cards. I was like, I might have a video or something. I got to like go dig through my archives, but 
I literally got a thing and cut up my my card. I'm not joking. Um, usually people just throw it away. Well, they say it as a meta. No, I have no metaphors over here. I I did it. <laughs> I literally cut it up. Um, I cut it up. Cut it up. Cut it up. And yeah, so you you clearly see that sometimes you don't want to do that because you want to keep older lines on your um, credit report. But this wasn't an old card. So that didn't really hurt me too much, but I lost out on the utilization part and um, the the meaning how much money I had access to. So that went up and then it went back down and, uh, you know, creditors and, and lenders and whatnot, like they don't want to see you open up a, a line like that and then just kind of close it pretty like fairly after like it's not a good look. Um, but this part down here I like is that they're saying, hey, if you don't use a card much, well. You know, but like I said, this little caveat down here, like they're saying, if you have annual fees on your card or you are constantly tempted to make incremental purchases with that card, just cancel it to protect your finances. Now, like I said a moment ago, you might see a little drop in your credit score for a period of time. However, you can recover from that. It is only wise to keep these accounts open if they are not costing you any money during the year. So even if it's a 10 year account, you got to weigh the odds. They're saying, Hey, if, if it's a credit card that you've had for 10 years, but you, you know, it has that annual fee, you know, maybe at this point, like you can probably take a little bit of a dip, take a little bit of a hip in the short term, but you're not going to be paying the ongoing fees for a card that you just don't use. And you're only keeping it open because it's one of the oldest credit uh, credit uh, lines that you have. But again, you got to weigh the odds. You, you also have more utilization, access to more money, um, in which that means you can spend, you know, more and it'll keep your utilization below 10 or 30%. So you got, you got to weigh it out. Everyone's different, but I'm just the middleman over here, just the messenger sharing and kind of reminding you of the different aspects and ways you can think about this whole, this whole credit game. Number Three is getting trapped by introductory offers. Mm -hmm. They'd be dangling that carrot in front of us like, come and get it, come and get it. And we just be chasing after it like a little donkey, right? <laughs> it says interest, introductory interest rates and rewards programs are great, but they can lure you into opening an account you don't really want or need in the long run. If you are shopping for a new credit card, don't just look for a card with a great rate for the first 12 months. Try to find a card that will help meet your needs for several years. Realize most introductory rates come with a catch. If you are late on a payment one month, your introductory rate could be canceled and you'll immediately begin paying the ongoing APR. This is an easy way to dig yourself into further debt. So in general, stay away from store credit cards. They try to lure you in with a certain upfront discount, but they normally have very high APRs. I don't really fall for, for that part, you know, introductory things. I'm not, that's not really what gets me going crazy. Um, but I know it does draw a lot of people in. And, you know, sometimes you can make some moves with your purchases just so that you do kind of assure that you do uh, hit that certain kind of quota or whatever. And um, then you do get your reward points to that and the other. But as they're pointing out, sometimes the risks aren't really worth the rewards. Next on the list, number four is co-signing for friends and family. If you have good credit and a stable income, you may be asked by someone you will care about to co-sign on a loan or credit card. No matter how much your heart may want to help this person, co-signing could be asking for trouble. If that person can't make payments on the account, you will have to in order to preserve your credit score. So if that person can't make payments on the account, well, you will have to in order to preserve your credit score. This relationship can quickly turn sour if you are constantly having to pay someone else's debt. I haven't co-signed for any friends or family and I'm glad no one has asked me to be honest because I don't want to be the one to be like, mm, I, ain't, I ain't the one, I, that ain't me. Um, you know, maybe you guys have, have you before? I mean, no one ever calls on me before. So, 
Hey, now, you know, my kids might be a little different as I want to try to build their credit when they're young and stuff. When, when I have kids, I ain't got no kids yet. But, you know, so I may think about a little differently if I'm a parent who has made a conscious effort and actually taught my kids financial literacy so that they have money management skills. And hey, you guys know, or well, maybe you don't. My other channel, Make Manage Grow Money. That's literally the name of my other channel, Make Manage Grow Money. So I'm going to have that money management thing down with my kids when they, when they, you know, little mini me's up in here, little Adams yeah, or Aces, whatever you want to call me. Well, yeah, they, they're going to be, they're going to be good on that. So maybe I might co-sign them. I don't know if I'm going to entirely agree with this one here. <laughs> and lastly on the list is ignoring unused credit accounts. So keep an eye on all of your open credit and bank accounts, even if they are not very active. You may not need to check them daily, but it would be wise to look over them once a month. This helps you catch an authorized charge on the account as soon as it occurs. Most creditors will correct the issue relatively quickly if you catch it shortly after it happens. It may take several months to get matters cleared up on your credit report, so check these unused accounts once a month to catch any errors. And this is something that I'll be kind of honest and transparent about that I haven't done as frequently. I do kind of get into my accounts and I'll look them over maybe every quarter, um, but not every month. And I, you know, I think this is something important to to dive into more. And you know, I do use Nav and you know Credit Karma. I have a link down to Nav if you want to check it out to help me with kind of monitoring my overall my business credit and my personal credit. And you know, if, if I see any red flags or anything that just doesn't sound familiar, I'll, I kind of think I would notice it. Um, you know, we do, I do my once a month credit update. So I kind of do, I guess, look at my accounts uh, once a month more, more frequently than I thought, I guess. But it's, you know, again, something that you definitely want to make sure you have in the mix, especially if you're someone out there with like 10 plus credit cards. I know some of you guys out there love your credit cards, hence you love my channel. Um, so this is definitely an important little reminder, something that you want to do. Check your credit accounts, your bank accounts. Do not ignore them. So my friends, I hope you guys found these five tips, these five pointers helpful, beneficial as you continue to move forward in your credit building journey and your credit score journey. Maybe you're not trying to, you know, you're not trying to build things anymore. Maybe you're good where you're at right now. Maybe you're like, you know what? I got me like a 750, 780 I'm good here. I ain't trying to go higher. I don't want to go lower. Well, again, these are some important mistakes that you can easily avoid that will help you maintain your credit score or and or improve it. So my friends, I'm going to wrap it up there, but I hope you guys found this video helpful, informative, entertaining. Um, if so, definitely smash that like button. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. But you guys already know what it is. I got to keep it moving, but I'll see you in the next video. Peace.